Today's video, I'll be going to the filming locations for the 2001 film, The Fast and the Furious, one of my all-time favorite movies. Now, with that being said, I'm forewarning you guys now, there's gonna be a lot of quoting going on in this video because once I get to the spots, it's just gonna be, I'm just gonna be recreating and saying all the lines that were there. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And at some point, I'm gonna have a friend pop in and say hello, I'm waiting on him to get a hold of me. So with that being said, I'm, I'm not even gonna keep talking because I'm just ready to get into this video. So without further ado, let's go check out the filming locations for The Fast and the Furious. Here I am at the first location. I'm at Pier C down here on Terminal Island. Remember that Pier C. I'm at the opening scene from the film. Unfortunately, where I need to get to is blocked off, but I'm in the exact area of the opening scene. Check this out. Just beyond this fence right here is where the opening scene of the movie was filmed. The cargo container coming down in the air gets on the back of the semi it has dvd players and whatnot the guy closes the door pulls out his cell phone and calls somebody and says i just packed up the real mother load it's headed your way don't forget my share of the deal clicks off and the semi takes off in the distance now as you may wonder is this really where the scene was shot Yes, because this bridge is seen in the background of one of the shots, along with these little hoister thingies in the air as well. So we are definitely, definitely in the right area. All right, so for this next location, I'm going to be rather quick, but this is the highway where the Civics heist the semi truck. I know how this is the correct highway because that little bridge that goes across the highway can be seen in multiple shots along with this factory over here on the right side. Right here is the highway where the Civics heisted the semi. power plant in the background as well. Would have came up right through here. This is the exact route that they take. bend down this way and this sign coming up for New Dock Street can be seen very briefly in one of the shots as well so this entire stretch of highway Dock exit. So here I am outside of Dodger Stadium. You may notice that Dodger sign right in the middle of your screen, sort of. 
That is the same sign that Brian pulls up next to as he's getting ready to test out his Eclipse. Unfortunately, the area that I'm at is blocked off and I was able to get this shot from the road, but it's still pretty cool to see nonetheless. So I have to be rather quick about this location, but it's at Dodger Stadium. And if you go to the stadium, you have to follow this blue line around the parking lot to get up to the gift shop. But this is the exact location where after Brian spins out the Eclipse after test driving it, he spins out, he pulls up next to a guardrail and there's a, a shot of downtown LA as soon as he drives away, but this is the exact spot. Toronto's market. Let's check out this location. This road right here is Marion Avenue. Now as the song is playing, Brian can be seen driving up the road in his sweet Ford Lightning. And there's a yellow house with a brown roof that can be seen in the shot as well as he's coming around this turn. So this is the shot right here where Brian comes pulling around that curb and parks right there. And as the song is playing, does he run it deep enough to take you there? Sort of pans over slowly. And we're here at Toretto's Market. This is freaking sweet. We're gonna go in and check it out. But first, I'm gonna stop right here at this display case. Oh my goodness, this is so freaking awesome. They sell the cars. Some hats, I'm definitely, definitely getting that. And I actually have this, I bought quite some years back. Some stickers, I like the license plate and the license plate cover. Some smaller cars right there. Some bigger cars. Wow, this is, this is really cool. The last time I was here, they didn't have any of this stuff. I know I'm gonna end up buying something. I asked about the shirts and they don't have my size. Dang it. We're inside the market. Let's see if we can find some Corona. I found it. Before I forget, <laughs> the scene, Brian walks up and throws his magazine down on the table and he talks to Mia about having the tuna, no crust, no crust. Sitting right about here. And Dom was in the back drinking. He gets up and kind of looks at Brian. They look at each other and they're like, oh yeah. So it is an actual little market. You can go in there and buy pretty much, like it's like a little convenience store, snacks, drinks, stuff like that. So I'm gonna try and match up some more shots outside. Well, thanks a lot, Mia. I'll see you tomorrow. Vince is like, tomorrow? Brian goes to walk off. Vince is like, yo, try a fat burger from now on. You get yourself a double cheese with fries for $2.95. Brian's like, I like the tuna here. Vince is like, bullshit, asshole. Nobody likes the tuna here. Brian says, yeah, well, I do. Right here. That's where they got into their little tussle. The entire fight. Right here, and their cars were lined up. Right there. It's weird because they make it from right here where Brian's truck is all the way back to over here. <laughs> So it's a shot just about like this where Brian can be seen turning around talking events talking about the tuna. So this tree can be seen, this tree and this house and partially that garage way in the back there. So Dom, Mia, Letty, Leon and Jesse all come out to break up the fight. They take Vince over that way. Dom brings Brian to the side. Jesse, give me the wallet. 
Brian Spillinger. It sounds like a serial killer name. Is that what you are? Brian's like, nah, man. Don't come around here again. Hey, man, you know this is bullshit. You work for Harry, right? Yeah, I just started. You were just fired. Now, as you can see, it does look a little different than in the movie back then. That is because people have been driving through here like crazy. That, and they also have been filming the more recent movies up that way. But they put up these guard poles over there, over there, way over on the other side, and down that way to, to keep people from speeding through here because this is clearly a neighborhood. And people can't be respectful and show their respect in a more different way, they have to speed through here. But if you want to come visit, you can still line up some shots and stuff and see where it was filmed at and whatnot. I'm getting kind of hungry while doing all these locations and I found the perfect place and it was even recommended by Vince. Check this out. I think it's only right that we go to Fat Burger and try the fries and whatever else they have. What do you know? They really do have the double cheese. Vince lied. The double cheese and fries are not $2.95. Well, I didn't get the double cheese. Instead, I got a chicken sandwich. But these fries are thick. Thick with two C's. All right, check this out. I have a crazy story to tell you guys. I don't think this is a coincidence, but listen, I'm standing in line ordering my food here at Fat Burger and the radio is playing and I'm listening and there's a specific lyric that I heard in an older song and it goes rat-a-tat-tat and all the punks scatter. I don't know what song it was, it's an older song. However, those lyrics were also used in another song by Benny Cassette in the song Watch Your Back. And it's the song that plays when Brian and Vince fight and talk about getting them a double cheese with fries for $2.95 here at Fat Burger. I don't think that's a coincidence. That is insane. All right, so for this next location, I'm gonna need some help. Looking for a guy named Harry. Does anybody know Harry? He is the owner of Racer's Edge here. What used to be Racer's Edge. Let's check out this location. All right, so here we are outside of the Racer's Edge depicted in the film. This location was used a few times in the film. Beginning is when we meet Harry and he's talking to Brian about how he needs Nos and all that stuff. And then again later on in the movie when Hector shows up and he orders three of everything. Now it's crazy to see that this location has changed over the years, but you'll notice the sign on top of the roof a little bit farther down and the windows and doors are still the same. That's pretty cool. Brian wasn't in today, but I did tell Harry that I got to move on to the next location. And he said that he's just going to overnight all my parts from Japan. So let's go to the next location. Do, 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 tell me what's the secret I'm missing and I'm going to come and get it. I'm going to be in the middle where I love to be. Guys, I'm at the car meet location from the first film. Let's check out where that scene was shot. All right, let's break this scene down. This parking garage right here wasn't here during the filming. In the movie, this entire area was a big open lot. And you could see the cars driving in, coming in this direction here. And then we get Brian coming in after he gets his two bottles of NOS from Harry. You know, because amateurs don't use nitrous oxide. Anyway, there's a shot down low about this seeing the eclipse come in and we see that tube hanging underneath the car and it always bothered me <laughs> when i watched the movie it still does to this day but anyway brian rolls in kind of turns off to the left backs his car up and i want to say it was about right here in this general area where he parked his car because there's a shot sort of like this 
that you can see him backing his car in. He backs in, gets out. I'm just gonna say he stood right about here on top of this sewer crate, that's about right. So Hector was standing over there. We got Edwin, we got Danny Yamato. We're all standing over here, people everywhere. <laughs> so Hector sees Brian just standing there because he wasn't talking to nobody. He walks up, he's like, sweet ride. What you running under there, man? Brian doesn't say anything. You gonna make me find out the hard way. Oh, hell yeah. So you, you brave, you brave. My name's Hector, got a last name too, but I can't pronounce it, so yeah. Brian Spilner, that typical white boy name, you know what I'm saying? And then they get to talking a little bit and then we got Edwin shows up. Brian's like, I'm just waiting for a Toretto. Edwin's like, shit, you better get in line. This yours? Brian's like, yeah, I'm standing next to it. You know, Edwin happens to know a few things. One of the things that we knows is, it's not how you stand by your car, it's how you race your car. You better learn that. At the same time, Dom and crew come rolling in from that direction. Sort of an overhead shot that I can't get of Dom and his crew rolling into the meet here. And I wanna say they probably stopped somewhere in this vicinity because Brian was parked back there and they go past him. So, Dom revs up his engine, stop, gets out, shakes a couple hands, starts mingling with some people. He's Monica. <laughs> Letty's like, ow, I smell skinks. Why don't you girls just pack it up before I leave tread marks on your face? All that was filmed right here in this area. Okay, Hector. Yo, what's up, man? We doing this tonight. Yeah, one race, 2G buy-in, winner takes all. Why Hector? Because he's too slow to make away with the money, man. Ooh, Brian's like, hey, wait, hold up. I don't have any cash, but I do have the pink slip to my car. Jesse's like, hey, wait, you can't climb in the ring with Ali just because you think you box. Brian points to Vince. He knows I can box. So check this. I lose, winner gets my car, clean and clear. I win, I get the cash, and I get the respect. They'll laugh, respect. Is that your car? Let's see, it's got a cool air intake, it's got a NOS fogger system, a T4 Turbo Dominic, an AIC controller, it has direct port nitrous injection, and a standalone fuel management system. Not a bad way to spend $10,000. So what do you say, am I worthy? We don't know yet, but you're in. Let's go. All right, this is actually really sweet. I'm at the location of the first race of the movie. It's gonna be a little difficult to pinpoint some spots here, but I'm gonna show you a few things because we got traffic going and it's a busy road. Let's check it out. So I'm on the corner of 120th and Prairie, and this is where the first race took place. Right over there is where they would have lined up their cars. We got Toretto on the left, Danny Yamato, played by RJ Devera, Ja Rule as Edwin, and Brian. So during that film, there were tons and tons of cars all lined up down this road. And it is big enough for them to race. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six lanes. This is crazy. I would assume Hector was parked somewhere right here because he's facing that way when he yells at them to go. It's crazy being here because this movie means so much to me flying down this road. This movie has means so much to me growing up as a kid. I would always watch it. You know, I'd always play with my little die cast cars and stuff, pretending I was racing. And then right after Paul passed away, I went and got this tattoo. It's the first race 
crazy to be here. The same place that's tattooed on my arm. Dude, I almost had you. Crazy to think about, I know. And here we go. I'm gonna walk across the road where they were stationed at. We got Toretto, Danny Yamato, Edwin, and Brian. So they all slowly come rolling in right here and they stop. I want to say probably about where this track is. They had it spray painted a red line. Dom stops, Danny Yamato stops, Edwin stops, and then for some reason, Brian comes sliding across. Vince is watching him right here as he's walking by. And then once Brian kind of goes over the start line, goes to a shot sort of like this as he backs up. I just noticed that they have medians in the middle of the road. One right there. They got some down that way. Do you think they put them in because of the movie? So nobody would street race down this road? After the cops show up and bust the race, Dom drives off and he enters this building here. Now they've actually turned it into an apartment building, which is rather crazy. That little door on the left side, on the bottom, is where Dom pulled in his RX-7 and he goes up and escapes from the cops. It is blocked off now, you can't get up there, but it's pretty cool that they turned it into an apartment building. This is Pagoda Street right here, and right across the road is a TNK food market where Johnny Tran and Lance escort Brian and Dom to go back that way and have a talk. It's somewhat busy out here, kind of standing in the middle of the road, but uh, this particular archway was seen in two different shots. The one of Johnny Tran escorting Brian and Dom and then again, after Johnny Tran and company blows up, well, Johnny Tran and Lance, they blow up Brian's car. Brian and Dom come walking down this road right here. Brian's like, what the hell was that all about? Dom's like, the business deal that went sour, plus the made this mistake of sleeping with his sister. Well, I got a 20 mile hike, humor me. <laughs> Yeah, both scenes shot right here. Now we're gonna go see if we can find where they actually blew up the eclipse. I wouldn't have done this location any other way besides being here at night. Ryan was supposed to be here. I was out doing my thing, he was out doing his. We are supposed to meet here. He forgot his camera at the hotel. So Ryan couldn't join us tonight, but we're checking out where Lance blew up Brian's car here in Little Saigon. And we're gonna try and match up some shots. So this building here is now a supermarket. And it's called a Dong Supermarket. I'm literally not making that up. It's really called that. But anyway, this entire parking lot here was full of like little gazebos and a little garden area and a ton of statues which you can kind of see there's some right there some right there and some way over in that corner but the one that they show opening this particular scene is not over here in the parking lot i have checked but i'm going to go over and show you guys all the statues anyway but first Let's look at this location and see where the car was actually blown up. All right, let me try and explain this scene because it does look quite differently than it did in the film. But I have found where Johnny Tran and his cousin Lance with the snakeskin pants blow up the eclipse. I have parked my car 
somewhat to where I think that they blew it up at. Now, there's a couple things I'm gonna explain. This wall, not here in the film because obviously they come in from that direction. And as you see, there are no little like gazebos and no little garden, but some of the statues are still here. They have some there, some down in that corner and some over in that corner. That's all that's left, but we will check those out here shortly. I don't think I see the one from the film, but right here where I parked my car is where I believe they blew up Brian's Eclipse. And I'll give you the exact reason why I know that this is the location because this wall right here can be seen, but the most biggest giveaway is this building right here in the background. It goes up and there's like a little drop down to the left and there's a telephone pole right there that kind of curves up to the left or right, either way, whatever. But yeah, there's a shot just like this that can be seen when Johnny Tran and Lance come back to blow up the car with their Uzis. They shoot the other side of it, but this wall can be seen very briefly in the background. Just a little tidbit of information when Brian and Dom are being escorted by Johnny Tran and company, when they go underneath the T and K food archway, that's actually like a half mile away from here. That whole thing was not filmed in the same, it's on the same street, but not the same area. This scene is filmed behind a supermarket. So a little bit of movie trivia for you that you didn't know about. We got some more statues over here. These are really neat. You might hear a cat in the background. There's something going on over behind that fence. But these statues are pretty neat. Oh, look, there's a kitty right there. Okay, bye. But yeah, these statues right here in the center, if you will, of the parking lot. And there's some over there too. Now there's a car parked down there with the door open and there are people in it. So I don't really want to go down there, but there are some more statues down that way as well. Okay, the market, right down at the end of this road. And check this out, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Toretto house. Now, being that this house had multiple scenes filmed, I'm not gonna try and match anything up because a lot of scenes were filmed. And then we got the barbecue where they all pull in. Vince takes off that way. But I think most importantly is the ending scene where Jesse gets shot. Getting Leading up to this, Jesse gets shot right here on this sidewalk. After Jesse gets shot by Johnny Tran and his snakeskin pants cousin Lance, roll on down that way and take off that way. And Brian Supra was parked right here. Jesse's Jetta was parked right there. And Dom's Charger was parked way back there. Now as a keep out, no trespassing. The house was all shot up. That house was shot up. Jesse's Jetta was shot up. Poor old Jesse, laying dead right here. Such a tragedy. Brian gets in his Supra, takes off down that way. Mia is holding Jesse's body. He gets in the charger up the driveway, starts it and drives off going down that way. Looks like I'm late for the barbecue because there ain't nobody here. Damn. So after Brian gets a 10 second car, junk car from Tanner, this right here is Toretto's garage. This is where they bring 
the beat up Supra. This is where they filmed that scene at. Let's take a closer look. If you can't find the right tool in this garage, Mr. Arizona, you don't belong near a car. So I got to thinking, when they're building the Supra, Jesse gets on the computer and puts in the old floppy disk and he's showing him the basic layout of the car and it's pretty much what it could look like when it's finished. I want to say those scenes were filmed right up there on that top level because the windows kind of match up when they're sitting there talking. But yeah, this is definitely really cool to see Toretto's garage. And the old famous scene was like, what do we got there? This is your car. My car? I said a 10 second car, not a 10 minute car. You could push this across the finish line or tow it. Couldn't tow that across the finish line. Hey, no faith. No, I have faith in you. This isn't a junkyard, it's a garage. Hey, pop the hood, pop the hood, pop the hood. 2JZ engine, no shit. Right through there. That is freaking sweet. You know what? This will decimate all after. You put about 15 grand in it or more, if we have to, overnight parts from Japan. So when they finally get the Supra complete, fully built, they come barreling out of the garage, do like a little drift right here, go down that road and make a left. This is the location here where Brian breaks into Hector's garage and he's trying to figure out what's going on with them Honda Civics that he orders three of everything for. Let's check it out. This is the building here and there's only one thing remaining after all these years and it's this awning right here. Now in the film, Brian is running, sneaking if you will, on this side of the wall and he looks over peeking over and he sees Hector and his group right over there now you may notice that this building is pretty much brand new so there's a parking lot here they built that specific building that everybody was hanging out with Hector they built that just for the set now I know you can tell that this is the exact spot because a this awning is still here and b this factory behind is still here as well because it at night it was all lit up and you could see like all the uh like silos or whatever all those things are but yeah we were definitely definitely in the right spot it looks like it's some kind of uh car garage <laughs> how ironic yeah you'll notice that all of this has been redone since the filming of the movie. Upon further examination of this specific spot, there's no way that nobody didn't see Brian that night that he broke into Hector's because it's literally right across the street. There is no way. Look. You could definitely, he would have definitely been seen because it's its a really small area right here. So I don't know how, I don't know how nobody didn't see him, but it's Brian O'Connor for you. He would have been peeking around this corner, looking over and seeing Hector and his crew right there in that parking lot. I mean, he would have broke in to those windows there. This is the alleyway behind Hector's garage. I've sort of parked my car where I'm pretty sure Brian parks his truck. And this is the exact location because in the film, these windows, they were all like gated up. But the doors you can see are different from this part that was blocked off. And this is the window that was in the shot as well. So he would have went up a pipe right here 
and this corner. So it, it's pretty much the same. Pretty cool to be here. So this is also where Vince and Dom uh, interrogate Brian and trying to figure out if he's a cop or not. And then Brian's like, I owe you a 10 second car. You know, I can't lose. Dom's like, so you're just gonna go around everybody's garage checking one shit out after another? He's like, yeah. So this entire alleyway is where they shot those scenes. It's kind of cool seeing that this building hasn't changed. Here I am at the intersection of Hanum and Playa Street. Right behind me is Johnny Tran's garage. This is the exact garage. This is sort of like a Holy Grail location. But in this scene, Jesse rolls up and has Dom, Ryan, Vince with him. They pull in right here. They all hop over this fence and they go back that way. So yeah, Johnny Trans garage. Me and Ryan venturing out here in the wilderness all for a location. That's crazy. So me and Ryan are hiking this little trail all because the location that we want to get to is in a gated community. Now we're going right down this path. We're up here in the canyon. Man, I'm already out of breath. But we are coming right up to the aerial shot. Well, from the canyon here of Johnny Tran's house. The one that the SWAT team raids. After a treacherous walk through this trail on this hill, we finally found Johnny Tran's house. It might not be the exact angle, but it's close enough. Check this out. In the film, the SWAT team comes around this corner of the road and they stop at the little cul-de-sac area. And right there, Johnny Tran's house. That's where they go in. The dope song is playing, debonair. Such a classic song. I love it. And they go into a rest. Johnny Tran, it looks to me like the father kind of runs into the other room. They arrest him. He comes back and whoosh, hits him. I don't care nothing about it. Wow, yeah. Jordan has hit no less than 237 locations in the past 24 hours. This is all thanks to you, Ryan. I, I personally, I wouldn't have made this hike by myself because it's mountain lions and snakes and whatnot. Then, I mean, we could just go over to Johnny Tran's house. I'm sure he'll let us in. We could just break in. You said what? I mean, like in the movie. Yeah, makes sense. You know, Johnny Tran lives in a really good area, really nice area. Keep in mind that this area is in fact gated, so there is definitely no possible way of us getting in there. I don't know if I really would have wanted to though, because there's really no close-up shots of the house. So being up here on the hill is kind of, is kind of like the cake, you know, the good stuff. Not so much as the hike over here, because I'm wearing shorts. Ryan's got pants on, so it's easy for him. Not for me, though. A nice car. What's a retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. The race between the Supra and the Ferrari right here at this intersection. Let's take a look. I'm here at the intersection a PCH and Truncus Canyon Road where there is a Chevron right across the street. And right over here to my left, you can 
see Ryan over there doing his thing. These two lanes right here is where the Ferrari is sitting there at the light. Brian and Dom roll up. Don't think I didn't hear that, Ryan. Brian and Dom roll up. Brian says to the driver, whom of which is Neil Moritz, for those who don't know. Brian says, nice car. What's a retail of one of those? He says, more than you can afford, pal, Ferrari. Dom says, smoke them. I'm going to try and get this shot really quick before. Heck yeah. Before I get hit. Dude, I don't know how I just. Asked what was the mileage on that train. No, he and says. What's... Is more than you can afford. <laughs> no, we can only afford Hondas and, and Kias yeah. right now. Hyundai Elantra. I got a Kia, whatever the hell it is. I don't even know. I just know it's a Kia. Mine's fresh out of Fox. Fox rental cars. But yeah, right here, one of the most iconic scenes in the film. Actually, it was probably one of, well, obviously, obviously it's races, but one of the best races in the film. Crazy over here listening to Ryan do his thing. He made it some pretty clear points. These buildings over here can definitely be seen in the background. That building that's kind of got like those half circles can be seen as well. And I'm pretty sure some of this building over here can be seen. I don't know about the, were the gates? Could you see the gates in that? That house right there, the, see the front gate? This might be new, I'm not sure. But the, uh, Houses are definitely still the same, along with the uh, siding, as I was saying before. All right, I'm up in Malibu. This scene is one of the iconic scenes. It's definitely an iconic location. Where Brian and Dom talk about race wars. And I'm here, special guest, everybody. Ryan, going to the movies. What's up? We're gonna recreate some scenes here. We're gonna get, we might get some shrimp. You're vegan, right? Yeah. I and I don't, fries. I don't really like shrimp. Uh, I'll get some chicken tendies, but uh, we're gonna go talk race wars and match up some shots. Let's go. After Brian smokes the Ferrari, they can be seen coming down the hill right here in a shot just like this. They pull in, stop, park, and get out, and go in and have some shrimp. Very cool to be here. Very loud, too. So I may not have got the shrimp, but I did get chicken tenders and fries. So as you can see, Ryan's sitting right there on the right side of the table. This is where they filmed the scene sitting here at Neptune's Net. He is sitting right where Vin Diesel, a.k.a. Dominic Toretto, sat. And on the left side, where I sat, is where Paul Walker, a.k.a. Brian O'Connor, would have sat and would have talked about race wars and whatever Dom's in on, Brian wants in on it, too. This is a really, really iconic location and probably one of my favorite places to eat when I'm in L.A. All right, really quick. I just want to point something out here. The beginning of the Supra Ferrari race, that intersection is seven miles away from Neptune's net here. They want you to think that it's right over that highway, but in actuality, it's actually a pretty far drive. It's a, probably 10, 15 minutes. So at any point, that Ferrari could have turned off and gone its own way, but we really don't know what happens to the Ferrari, but we know that it does, in fact, lose to the Supra. So fun fact, that intersection is not even anywhere near here. It's seven miles up the highway right there. All right, so for this location, I am outside of the San Bernardino Airport, and this is where they film the scenes of race wars. 
Now, unfortunately, it is blocked off and I can't get in. So, this is the best that I could possibly do from the side of the road without getting in trouble. So, during this scene, you will notice in the background of multiple shots, there are airport hangars, there are, like, towers and stuff, but this is definitely the right spot. And I'm pretty sure one of the hangars is back there. That one that's kind of curved right there, the right. That can be seen in the shots as well. So... It's really cool to be at this spot, but I really wish I could have matched up the shots of Johnny Tran and Jesse racing. Oh, well. All right, I'm going to be real quick about this location. This spot has yet to be seen here on YouTube, so I will be the first to cover it. This is the location of the stashed Honda Civics that Toretto and crew hijacked the semis with. Fun fact, it is also on the same highway as the final hijacking between the civics the semi and where brian comes to rescue vince So here I am on Glendale Boulevard, downtown Los Angeles area. And this is the location where Brian shoots Johnny Tran off his bike. Not in the best of areas here in LA. However, you will notice that mural across the street on the side of the wall. The little lady towards the end on the left is right where Johnny Tran crashed his bike. After being shot by Brian, he runs across the street to see if he's still alive. Johnny Tran is not. He runs back across yelling, call 911. But this is a pretty cool location. Here's just a quick clip of me driving down the same road where Brian is chasing Johnny Tran and he shoots at him and he wrecks across the street there at that wall at the mural. So after Brian shoots Johnny Tran, he sees Toretto up at the top of the hill and he follows him and you'll notice here in just a second that there's a church up here to the left that big church you can see that in the shot when Brian takes off to go after Dom when Brian is on his chase after Dom you can see Dom's car jump over the top of this hill and what's weird is that this is filmed in the LA area and it cuts over to Long Beach. So we've come to the very end. It's been bittersweet, but here we are on Tuna Street. Wonder if they have any tuna no crust? Anybody? Anybody? No? Okay. Anyway, I'm here at the last race location. Right here is where Dom and Brian faced off for the last time. Let's take a look at this location. Dom comes barreling down this road here and stops right there. Next we see Brian come around the corner just like that white van approaching. I'm gonna walk over here, see if we can pinpoint some stuff. I have to wait for traffic here for a second. Tuna Street, no crust. All right, people, easy Toretto. Okay, so. Dom, right here. Brian, right here. It is crazy to stand here. 
and see where they faced off at the end of the movie. So the railroad tracks are on Earl Street and Terminal Way. And right here is where they would have jumped the railroad tracks. I just wanted to show this really quick. This is where the train come rolling in and they would have jumped the railroad tracks right there. After they crossed the railroad tracks, they would have come down this way. That green semi that came out of nowhere would have came from right here. I'll tell you how I know this. I'm gonna break this scene down for you. This is the exact location where the wreck was. It looks to me as if there used to be a road here. Now that movie was 23 years ago. So that curb must have been an old road I'll tell you how I know this is the exact location because there's a quick shot of Brian after he stops his car after the wreck and he's running up to Dom and you can see the green semi in the background come from right here and the median, the curb can be seen in the shot as well. So that means that that entire wreck happened right here so he would have hit the semi and right where I'm walking he would have been in the air hit the ground and then as he landed Brian would have stopped his car somewhere right over here. Let's walk around really quick. All right, I'm gonna walk across the road so I can get a better angle and show you where Brian would have parked his car. All right, so, and we're moving. There would have been a shot of Brian stopping his car right along here because these funky trees can be seen in the background. So right where I was, Dom's car was in the middle. Brian's car was somewhere over here. Crazy. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hard to match things up because it looks like they've redone the sidewalks since the movie 2001 here we are 2023 so doesn't look i mean it looks the same but you can definitely tell that the sidewalks have been done because there's not as many trees as there was in the movie along the side of the road all right so here we go currently in the lane that brian was in Coming around the bend here. And here is where the traffic light would have been. Dom would have been sitting there waiting. Brian stops, looks over. Dom says, I used to drag here back in high school. That railroad crossing is exactly a quarter mile away from here on green. I'm going for it. And here we go. Pretend the light's green. There's just a random stop sign right here, so I gotta stop. Can't blow through it. This is freaking sweet. Up here where this traffic light is, is where the railroad track is. The 
train would have came in right through there from the right. It would have landed. Dom would have hit the semi right about here. Flipped over. Then he was said, it's not what I had in mind. So we're gonna drive down here. This is the way that Dom took after he drove off. And there you have it. That's the final race of the first Fast and the Furious movie. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on the filming locations of the 2001 Fast and the Furious. I can't tell you how much this movie means to me in seeing all these locations. It's definitely been bittersweet and I definitely have enjoyed seeing it and I hope you guys have enjoyed following me along as well. <sighs> It's crazy, just, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to actually come and see these locations in person. So I'm finally here and I'm so thankful that I've got the opportunity to come here. It has been fun guys. Remember, keep it fast, keep it furious, but always be safe. Like, subscribe, comment, share guys. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys on the next one.